uh, welcome to this uh, module of uh, risk assessment. Now, let us have a look about that what we have studied in the last module. We had a discussion about uh, the different definitions of uh, risk and uh, hazard. We have gone through the process protocol of uh, hazard identification, identified that what are the basic ingredients in list should be enlisted in the process uh, hazard checklist. We have gone through about the importance of uh, hazard surveys and uh, gone through the basic concept of hazard and operability studies. And uh, in the last module, we have started about uh, the brief review about the safety review that what is the importance of those safety reviews and uh, how we can go ahead. So, in this particular module, let us start with the remaining part of uh, the safety review. Now, this is uh, as we had a discussion that these are the very vital part of uh, uh, the working safety system in very, uh, various large companies, they are built right into the corporate safety strategies and they are uh, they, these uh, safety reviews, they usually come in, in different forms based on the specialized one and based on the need of uh, that particular company. So, ultimate aim is to reduce the, the hazard, to reduce uh, the economy loss uh, towards the company. Now, let us have a look that what is the difference between the safety review and the safety audit. Now, some uh, will equate uh, that a regulatory audit of a company with a safety review, but it is not true because uh, the uh, safety audit is partially different thing with the safety review. The purpose of audit may be to make the company safer by ensuring it complies with all kind of regulations. It is not a safety review. Now, it is, uh, the, uh, it is a regulatory compliance that is an audit and nothing more. So, the regulatory compliance or the regulations being put down by the several competent authorities like government, local government, federal government, central government, etc., based on the need of uh, the society. So, safety audit ensures that there is a regulatory compliance in that particular paraphernalia. Now, the safety review they use to recognize the various safety issues in either laboratory or process plant areas or, or any kind of uh, situation or environment that may be thereof. Now, this safety reviews develop the various solutions if any kind of challenge arises due to any malfunctioning or due to any regulatory requirement. Now, these safety reviews are categorized into two types. One is the informal one and second one is the formal one. So, let us have a look that what is the informal safety review. Now, this is used for small changes to existing processes and for the uh, for bench scale or a laboratory process or a quality assurance, etcetera. Now, to perform these kind of uh, informal safety review, a committee should be formed. The committee may consist of only two, three people and generally individual those who are responsible for the process, one or two others not directly attributed or associated with the process, but they are well acquainted or well experienced with the proper safer, uh, safety protocols or uh, procedures. Now, the idea is to provide a lively dialogue where uh, the ideas can be exchanged and safety improvement can be achieved or developed in due course of time. Now, the reviewers, they simply meet in a casual fashion to inspect the process equipment and operating procedures and to offer ideas and how the safety of the process might be upgraded. That means, by changing their ideas, by sharing their views, they can uh, approve or they can uh, upgrade the safety protocols. The important development should be summarized in a memo for others to reference in the upcoming time. The improvement must be employed before the process is operated, so that any kind of shortcomings etcetera can be uh, removed in due course of time. Now, the formal safety review, this is used for a new processes, substantial changes in any kind of existing processes and the process that need to be uh, an updated or they need an updated review. So, usually this consists of three steps. One is that prepare, preparing a detailed formal safety review report. You must have all these things with you. The committee is to review the report which is being prepared 
and inspect the process and they implement to whatever recommendations being given by those, the safety review committee, they ensures that those recommendations are properly implemented. So, the committee participants, they must be experienced in identifying the safety problems, whereas for the, the less experienced one, no, more formal HAZOP study may be more effective in identifying the various kind of hazards those who are applicable to the workplace. Now, this they used almost immediately or relatively easy to apply and is known to provide the good result. Now, this uh, includes various sections. So, those uh, important sections are enlisted in these this uh, particular slide. The first section deals with the introduction that is the, the general overview of the process, the plant, the process uh, overview, the complete process that what kind of the things are involved, what kind of a reaction involved, what are the different parameters involved, stoichiometric conditions and all the relevant engineering data that includes the thermodynamic data, etcetera, whatever being uh, required for that particular uh, uh, process. The second is the raw material and the products. Now, the starting point at this juncture should be the material safety data sheet because raw information about the raw material is extremely important whether there is any contamination, what is the minimum assay of that particular raw material because some uh, sometimes any kind of uh, contamination, any kind of adulteration, any kind of undesired product may lead to any th thermal or a chemical runaway reaction. So, you must aware about the hazard associated with these kind of scenario and what are the handling problems may arise in due course of time while handling such a raw material or a product. So, this type of information must be, must be available for the ready reference. Then you must have uh, a knowledge about the equipment setup. The proper complete description is essential with all kind of a specification. What is uh, the length, what is the height and what is the, the uh, operating protocol, etc. Then the fourth point is the procedure. That is the, what is the normal operating procedure. Remember thermodynamically there are only three things which you can control that is pressure, volume and temperature. So, you must know that uh, what are the normal operating procedures are inherent in that particular process. Then safety, the waste disposal protocol and the cleanup procedure because sometimes it may you may experience there may be a generation of uh, waste then how to, pro uh, how to clean that particular thing. Suppose a solvent is being produced or a solvent is being in, uh, in excess then you cannot drain it uh, as such. Then what is the cleanup pr protocol. On the basis of uh, the, the all the four points which are enlisted above, you may prepare a safety checklist. This includes all the critical area or the, all the crucial areas. Now, to supplement all those things, you must know that what is the material safety data sheet. We have gone through the, the material safety data sheet in the earlier modules. So, this material safety data sheet provides, provides a very vital information that may be useful for the point number 2 that is the raw material and product that may be useful for the procedure even it is uh, related to the handling hazards problem. Now, let us have a look at what is risk assessment. Now, risk assessment that is the process of uh, quantifying the probability of a harmful effect to individual from a certain human activities. This is the broad spectrum of risk assessment. This includes the incident identification and consequence analysis. Now, the incident identification this describes how an accident occurs. It frequently includes an analysis of various kind of probabilities. Sometimes the chair may be broken on which you are sitting. So, you need to enlist all kind of probabilities that may happen. Then the consequence analysis, this describes the expected damage. This includes the loss of life, damage to the environment or the capital investment or the capital equipment and the day's outage means in terms of somebody um, is having the occupational injury, occupational Ill, uh, illness, etc. So, it includes all these consequences that may happen due to that particular incident. 
Now, why there is uh, a need of uh, this uh, risk uh, assessment? The first thing is that to protect ourselves, because the risk assessment is the key to prevention of uh, accident. So, everyone deserves to go home safely at the end of the day, at the end of the shift. And if he or she is not, then there means, there means something is wrong with respect to the process. So, you need to protect yourself or ourselves, then elevate safety awareness and ownership. So, you must aware about the various kind of hazards, risk and control and practicing safe science, because unhealthy practice, hazardous practice may not only uh, create a problem to yourself, but to the environment or nearby vicinity. Then university and faculty procedures, they also play a very vital role through their research protocols, through their research outcomes. They may guide, they may assist the regulatory bodies as well as the users that there is an utmost need of risk assessment. Then based on all kind of safety reviews, based on all kind of uh, guidelines, uh, there is a provision of uh, different regulations as laid down by the different regulatory bodies. Remember all those regulations are for to protect yourself as well as uh, to protect the environment. So, ye, uh, this you must ensure that based on your knowledge about the risk assessment you must comply with the, all the regulations as laid down by the local body as well as the central body. So, based on this particular aspect, let us have a, a proper definition of risk. That is the combination of a likelihood of an occurrence of a hazard event or exposure and the severity of injury or ill health or fatality that may be caused by the event or exposure. That is the likelihood that hazard will cause a specific harm or injury to person or a damaged properties. So, this is uh, you can say the broad spectrum of uh, the definition of risk. Now, whenever we discuss about the concept of risk, then we must uh, know or we must aware about uh, this type of uh, flow sheet. We must know that what can go wrong and if something goes wrong, then what are the impacts of uh, the, that wrong happenings. Now, if you analyze this, then what is the level of risk, how much it imparts or what is the consequence of that particular risk. Another aspect is that how likely it is, how much, what is the frequency, then again on the basis of that particular you analyze that what is the risk level. Now, if it is acceptable then go ahead. If it is not, then you need to manage that particular risk. So, risk management, this also includes the control and monitoring of risk as well as the communicating those risk to the nearby people or those who may get affected with that particular type of risk. Now, there is a brief history of uh, risk assessment. Remember, like hazard, risk is always there you cannot avoid the risk. We have already discussed that sometimes in a room where you are sitting right now, the roof may collapse, the chair may get destroyed. So, risk is always there. So, concept of this risk assessment was introduced with the Health and Safety at Work Act in 1974. This was the first time when a synchronized um, risk assessment protocol was introduced and that was in United Kingdom. Then the concept expanded upon the management of health and safety regulations in 1992. Then there was a, a protocol related to the ionization regulation in 1999. Then the Workplace Safety Health Act was introduced in 2006. Remember, these uh, by and large all these act or all these regulations are applicable globally. So, integral to all other appropriate legislation that is COSHH that is the control of substance hazardous to health, personal protective equipments, PPE, noise, etcetera. Now, let us have a brief look about the Health and Safety at Work Act 
1974 applicable in United Kingdom. Now, it shall be the duty of every employer to ensure so far as it reasonably practical the health, safety and welfare at work of all its employees. This is extremely important because ultimately the employer who is basic sufferer of any kind of economic loss. Now, the section also places a requirement on the employee to cooperate with their employer in ensuring the company complies with all kind of requirement under that particular act. So, it is not uh, the employer's responsibility alone, it is uh, simultaneously it is the responsibility of the employee that he, he or she should help the employer to work upon under the paraphernalia of this particular act. Another act that is the Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulation 1992. This introduced to reinforce the Health and Safety at Work 1974 because there may be some shortcomings or because of the technological advancement from 1974 to 1992. There may be a chance that something uh, may be missed in due course of time. So, the places uh, duties um, on employers and employees including those who are clients, designers, principal contractors and other things. So, they expanded their horizon. Now, employees also have uh, their duties under this act to report any kind of shortcomings in the health and safety arrangement of that particular industry. So, it is a responsibility of employees that something if uh, uh, something is malfunctioning or something is missing. So, they must report, they should report, use all those equipment in accordance with the training and instructions. So, you must use because uh, uh, the training and instructions they are the integral part of any kind of safety uh, uh, protocol. So, they, they are bound to use the equipment, use of the equipment in accordance with what for which they are trained and they are giving the instructions. So, it gives another in, in, in another words they have the full right to refuse to use that particular equipment for which they are not trained. Now, take reasonable care of their own health and safety and those of others who may be affected by their acts or omissions that is again very important thing. Now, they are it is their responsibility to, re, to report the any kind of dangerous situation. Sometimes it may happen that temperature may be on the higher side that means that may lead to the, the thermal runaway reactions or even there may be a chance that pressure may build up and the safety devices may fail. So, any kind of dangerous situation they should report to the competent authority. Now, because of uh, the day by day using of uh, uh, different uh, ionized uh, um, radiative uh, equipments like UV, IR, etcetera. So, uh, the, uh, the UK government they proposed the ionizing radiation regulation 1999 act. The main aim of the regulation is to define by 1999 official code of practice was to establish a framework for ensuring that exposure to ionizing radiation arising from the work activities whether man-made or natural radiation and from the external radiation or internal radiation that is kept as low as a reasonable practicable sometimes laser may create a problem. So, they uh, it is the duty of the employee that the internal radiation should be kept as low as reasonable practicable that is ALARP and does not exceed closed li uh, uh, dose limit specified for that particular individual. So, the dose versus response prevails. So, it should not exceed as per the uh, beyond the specified limit. So, uh, in this particular protocol an employee shall not carry on work with ionizing radiation unless he has made an assessment of the radiation hazard to employees or other person in the event of any reasonably foreseeable accident occurrence or incident that is a very crucial thing. Now, before a radiation employer commences a new activity in respect to which uh, no risk assessment has been made by him, he or she shall make all suitable and sufficient assessment of the risk to any employee and other persons. 
that is the responsibility of the employer. And all hazard which could cause a radiation accident to be identified and evaluated. So, and apart from this a pro proper information should be given to all employees whether this type of hazard is present at the workplace. Now, there are certain legal requirements. So, uh, the first and foremost legal requirement that is based on the workplace safety and health that is a risk management regulation 2006. This is effective from 1st March 2006. Now, this workplace and safety, workplace safety and uh, health act um, is an essential part of new occupational safety and health framework to cultivate good safety habits in all individual at the workplace. Remember, this is the habit not the trained things. So, the safety habit is a crucial part. Now, this requires every person at the workplace to take reasonable, practicable step to ensure the safety and health of every workplace and worker. Remember, the safety is everyone's responsibility. Now, uh, what is this uh, reasonable practicable? Now, reasonable usually takes into account the severity of uh, harm and degree of risk or maybe sometimes likelihood of that injury or harm occurring. Now, the greater the risk, reasonable to go to a very considerable expense and effort to reduce it. So, how much is known about uh, the hazard? and the ways of elimination that is the reducing or controlling it, what are the other practicing and what are the standard recommendations. So, we must know all kind of this thing before applying this risk assessment. Now, whenever there is uh, a legal requirement, uh, then definitely those who violate all those legal requirement, there is a concept of penalties. So, any person who fails to comply may be fined up to say 10,000 dollars or it depends on uh, country to country for first offence and for the second or subsequent offence a person may be fined up to 20,000 or she may be jailed up to 6 month or both. So, penalties now this is this this penalty uh, the, this particular slide is for the reference in Indian context we do have such kind of severe penalties including the monetary penalty as well as uh, the uh, imprisonment penalties. So, we have gone through this uh, brief assessment of risk. Now, this uh, why we are intended, why do it? Now, obviously, based on the previous discussion, it is a very good practice. Now, a good risk assessment can identify the step to prevent the radi radiative accident occurring limit the effect of any kind of radiation accident, they prepare the employee for coping up with any kind of radiating accident, they drop the contingency plan. Now, if we replace uh, the radiation aspect with all kind of generalized things, then they identify any kind of hazardous things, then they limit the effect of those hazardous things then they prepare or train the employees for coping up with the such kind of uh, any untoward incident and then they draw up based on their knowledge competency they draw up any kind of emergency or contingency plan so in nutshell the risk management can be defined as the eradication or minimization of uh, the adverse effect of risk to which an organization is exposed now, why uh, the question arises that why there is a need of proper risk management regulations? The one thing is that to hold the stakeholder accountable for managing the risk they create and second thing is that to reduce the risk at source. Remember, everywhere whenever we are uh, re regulating or we are framing these kind of risk management or risk assessment, then definitely our basic motto is to reduce the economic losses because in case if you fail in the, uh, the risk management, fatality may happen then you need to pay the compensation. If there is an illness or injury then again you need to pay the compensation or you need to go ahead for the medical treatment uh, which may again uh, cause. 
Simultaneously, it is equally true for any kind of uh, property loss within uh, the plant periphery. Then again, you may suffer a production loss. Again, you may have to go for the modification, repairing, etc. Then ultimately, it may lead to the economic losses. So, that is why this is uh, these two points are extremely beneficial not only for the employee, but also for the employer. So, the risk assessment can be a very straightforward process based on judgment requiring no specialist skill uh, or complicated techniques. Now, this approach is commonly known as the qualitative or subjective risk assessment. Now, there is a concept of a record of risk assessment. So, first thing before we go into detail, how often must the risk assessment be reviewed? The question must be asked maybe at least uh, once in every three years maybe in within 6 years, maybe within 6 month, maybe monthly, maybe weekly, etc. Sometimes it may happen after an accident, so that we can analyze that what went wrong. Another thing is that when there is a significant change in the work process, introduction of a new machinery or a chemical, sometimes it may happen that uh, our industry may go ahead with the, um, the process modification, modernization, etc then again there is a need to go for this risk assessment. Then information of uh, safety technology or requirement made known, sometimes it may happen because of uh, the, the uh, um, untoward uh, the safety development, safety technological development, sometimes it may happen that new tool for safer technology, new tool for environmental technology may be developed. Then if your industry is willing to adopt that particular technology, then definitely you go for the risk assessment. So, there are uh, five step process for the risk assessment, need to identify, identify who might be harmed, you need to evaluate the risk, we have already done all these five aspects in the previous modules. So, in summary you need to record the finding because these recordings may be useful for uh, an, uh, further safety review and safety auditing and then you review what kind of the assessment you had carried out, whether it is good or wrong, whether it is okay. So, this type of things uh, you need to perform. So, uh, first step that we, we, we are carrying out that you need to identify the hazards. One, hazard identification we have already covered, determine the nature of the potential adverse consequences, may be using radiation, may be using any kind of fire and explosion, etc. Go ahead with the literature available because all literature may have various safety reviews, literature may have the different type of safety auditing reports, etc. And do not forget other hazard associated with the experiment or process because in past several accidents in the history they took place just because of omission of this particular aspect that is the other hazard associated with the, the experimental or protocol. So, uh, uh, how we can uh, identify the things that is first is uh, you, you have to be well acquainted with the all kind of uh, health and safety audits. You go through the academic journals because uh, there are so many journals available as on date they are attributed to the hazard and safety. They must, you must uh, be aware about the various kind of research papers available as on date because uh, it is a key interest issue of various researcher that how to improvise the, the process and by the improvisation of the process they develop various safety protocols. So, you go and you must read all those research papers. You must uh, have a consultation with the other co-workers because uh, they are on site, they feel that what may go wrong, what went wrong and what are the deficiencies in that particular system. You must go for all kind of accident reports so that you must aware that what may be wrong in that particular process, how you can deal it upon. You go for the various reports being published by various kind of trade organization because these trade organization provides a very vital road that what is the requirement of the society, what is the requirement of the consumer. So, sometimes you may need 
to incorporate all, all those type of requirement to, to the process and once you are incorporating those type of things in um, your process then definitely process modification may take place based on the process modification protocol requirement you need to review those uh, safety protocols which had earlier been applicable in your plant. So, these uh, trade organizational reports they play a very vital role in the kind of safety hazard and some sort, some trade organizations they are very particular that uh, to ensure that whether you have followed the safety protocol or not if you are not following that safety protocol as laid down by their governmental uh, organization or regulatory bodies then definitely they may refuse to to purchase or they may be refuse to have any kind of trade arrangement with your industry then health safety environment statistics because this gives you proper information that what kind of emission, what kind of uh, radiative uh, um, uh, uh, problems, what kind of fire and explosion data may to take place in the, the uh, your plant maybe uh, in your facilities. So, you must aware about these type of uh, methods for identifying the hazard. Now, this type of things are very similar for various kind of institutions. Sometimes the outside advice that is manufacturer of the equipment and the material is very useful for performing this type of assessment because whenever you are procuring any raw material from any kind of supplier, they used to supply the proper information either handling, storage, etc. Sometimes the equipment because if you are uh, just for the sake of an example, if you are using the pressure vessel, the manufacturer, they supply an information that what is the bursting pressure, what is the design pressure, so what should be the operating condition. So, this type of information is sometimes extremely crucial. Sometimes internal advice uh, may be uh, by any university or institution because they are continuously working on this, the, the process development, they are continuously working on the chemical kinetical aspect, etcetera. So, they may provide some types of it, uh, useful information for the safer process. So, in this particular module, we have studied about the various tools for uh, hazards. We have discussed about the various regulator, regulations uh, applicable for different type of hazards. We have gone through about the history of hazards. Uh, we, we are in the process of discussing the various protocols for risk assessment, risk management, etc. In the subsequent module, we are going to discuss this risk management protocol further. Thank you very much.